Eric Beard discussing integrated training and the National Academy of Sports Medicine's take on integrated training. We've gone through a basic introduction of the three levels of the OPT model and the five phases. We've discussed the seven components to a workout and there are two that we're going to focus on in this video and the first of which is going to be speed, agility and quickness training. This is an optional form of training for many health and fitness enthusiasts. It's critical for athletes. But for someone who's just looking to look better, feel better, we might need to incorporate it in a way for them to have some fun and to burn some calories in a different environment. Plus, most people don't like to be lashed to a treadmill and exercise bike. They like to move a little freer. So this is a good way to build that in. Speed of just speed is basically just thought of as moving straight ahead as fast as possible. Uh, agility is typically lateral change of direction oftentimes, although it could be linear change of direction could be transverse or multiplanar change of direction, and quickness is reaction to external stimulus. We want to progressively use this type of training, whether it's using a speed ladder, an agility ball, uh, working on sprinting or running mechanics, or agility drills, quickness or reaction drills that matches someone's abilities. So we have a three-tiered approach, stabilization, strength, and power for each of these types of training, and I caution you just to use them based on your client's levels and current abilities in relationship to their goal. It's a great way to burn some calories and have fun. For athletes, it's a mandatory component of training. Just use it safely and responsibly, but have some fun because it can be quite valuable. We're going to spend most of this video talking about resistance training. We've mentioned that NESM has five different phases within the OPT model that, that it uses. The first of which is going to be stabilization endurance training. It's the first phase of training. It's housed in the stabilization block of the OPT model. There's a specific set of acute variables that we're going to use here. Markedly, the 12 to 20 repetitions that are going to be followed anywhere between two to three sets in a very slow tempo. The eccentric lengthening is going to be about four seconds. The isometric hold is going to be about two seconds. And concentric shortening is going to be about one second. The key to this phase is that we're training in an unstable environment, specifically a controlled unstable environment. For people who have been sedentary and have muscular imbalances, they don't take in information and process it very well. So we want to add some perturbations that they now, their proprioceptors are forced to take in more information. The communication must come up to their brain and they must respond with the appropriate muscular actions. So training in a controlled, unstable environment can help to wake up these dormant receptors that we've seen. It can get the joint stabilizers and core stabilizers to start to fire again to prepare them for real life situations, as well as for the other types of training that they're going to experience throughout the rest of the OPT model. You can use any variety of equipment. We just want them to move in a slow, controlled manner, and we want to develop endurance of the stabilizers over time with the appropriate acute variables. In the strength level, there are three phases, phases two, three, and four. The first phase is strength endurance training. What's unique about this phase is we use a superset, which is back-to-back -back exercises for the same muscle group. The way that I remember this was I used the alliteration of superset same, back-to-back -back muscle sets for the same muscle group. So you might, the, the difference here is you're using two exercises. One is more of a strength-based exercise, which is more stable. You're using bigger muscle fiber types like tight, uh, you know, the type 2X, the larger ones, if we can stimulate those, and then we're coming back after the type 1. This might be a barbell bench press followed by a hands-on-the-ball push-up. We're working with the entire muscle fiber continuum. Think about the title, Strength Endurance. We're developing strength endurance. We're also starting to build bone density. Um, we're starting to develop that uh, the ligamentous connections within the bones. We're starting to develop the musculotendinous junction. So we're getting all aspects of the kinetic chain here. We're getting ready to deal with the volume intensity of the upcoming phases in the OPT model. That phase number two is a wonderful way to train. You can get a tremendous amount of work done in a short period of time. Phases one and two are the most commonly used in the OPT model regardless of goal. Phase number three is more of an optional goal and it's hypertrophy and it's just like it sounds. If you want to develop skeletal muscle fiber, these protocols will be helpful for that. Typically using traditional weightlifting approaches, barbells, dumbbells, machines, we're increasing the volume of work that's being done in lower periods of rest. We're also going to want to increase our calories during this phase of training by about 10% if we're going to be trying to build muscle. Not all of our clients are going to be doing that, so we might skip this for, with an individual who does not want to increase their hypertrophy. Next is phase number four, and that's maximal strength training. Another optional phase, important for athletes, 
but not necessarily the average gym goer who wants to look better or feel better. This is more power lifter type training, multi-joint exercises, barbell, dumbbell, kettlebells, lifting as heavy weight as possible, stimulating those type 2 X muscle fibers, moving as much weight as you can from A to B, using about 85 to 100% of our near our, our one rep max in every lift. We're not doing more than five repetitions in this phase of training. Important for developing maximal strength, not necessarily size, although if you do enough volume and eat enough food, you could build size here too. Size and strength are two different adaptations. That leaves us with the power level. Power level of the OPT model has one phase of training there, the power of training phase. We're again going to use supersets, back-to-back -back exercises for the same muscle groups. We're going to use an exercise from that maximal strength training like a barbell squat followed by a plyometric or explosive exercise like a squat jump. If I were doing this for chest, it might be a barbell bench press followed by a medicine ball chest pass. The thought process here is we know that lifting a heavy weight slowly or a light weight explosively will both develop the adaptation of power or improving rate of force production. So we're going to do both at the same time by a superset. So we stimulate and wake up those fibers, the large powerful fibers with the heavy weight first and then teach to move fast and explosively second with the back end of the superset. Now you must have um, good ligamentous integrity, good musculotendinous junction um, integrity. You have to have good technique. You must have good neuromuscular efficiency. You have to have endurance and stability long before you try to build, uh, attack this phase of training. You can get wonderful benefits from it, but if we jump into it too early, it's just another injury waiting to happen. Phase five is one that can be used with the average gym goer. Just develop your base in one and two before you jump up to five. So the five, five phases of training the OPT model are just using what we know works based on the available research. It doesn't mean it's the only phases that work. It doesn't mean it's the only combination of equipment and adaptations that's, uh, that's going to deliver results, but we know what's out there. And this is the basic recipe that fits. Based on your own experiences, the availability of your equipment and your client in front of you, you might manipulate these just slightly. But the acute variables are basically the nuts and bolts to what's going to get you where you want to go with your clients. The key is that we adjust them subtly and progressively to keep them moving forward. Just like in school, you always study math, whether it's addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, long division, calculus geometry in there somewhere, you always keep studying math. So in the OPT model, you just want to systematically and progressively move up. If someone has not learned how to do subtraction, do not ask them to do long division. We're looking for that progressive approach. Once we, pay, um, once we top out at whatever that top phase of training is that we're doing for this particular client, we come back down to phase one to recover and regenerate for a few weeks and then mount our assault back up the model. There's endless ways to creatively program this together. This is simply the blueprint or the template that you have to work with from there. And the creativity and the types of other training that you can put into it is really endless. That leaves us basically with the cool down and a wrap up, which you'll come back on for the next video. I'm Eric Beard. Thanks for watching.